but but to inter all right, good. To, inter to introduce Mayor uh, Castro is my dearest friend, the woman who speaks for me in the House of Representatives, a woman of tremendous courage, one of the great fighters not only for civil rights but for peace, a voice in the wilderness at the beginning of the Iraq mess, and she's never stopped fighting for peace and to keep America from sending its troops overseas into a lot of kind of ridiculous fights and wanting to concentrate our money on education and housing and health care. I give you the great member of Congress, Barbara Lee. guys in the back, you can't hear it all. A lot of empty seats up in front. I'm not a guy from the, you know, neighborhood. I can't do anything. Unless you want to turn the mic up louder. Is Alec here, the electrician? I'm not kidding. There's a lot of empty seats for people. If you can't, if you can't hear me talking through a mic, then there's a real damn acoustical problem here. Okay, we'll do the best we can. All right. <laughs> Give our chair a round of applause. Isn't he doing a fabulous job? And I just have to thank our chairman for that very kind introduction. I served, I said earlier, in the California Assembly and Senate with him. And I tell you, there is nobody, there is nobody who cares about this Democratic Party and who has led this Democratic Party in the most enlightened way because we are the most enlightened and progressive state in the entire state of the United States of America. So give Congress, Congressman, Senator, Assemblyman, my friend John Burton, our chair, a round of applause. Thank you, John. Thank you. And also, I just have to say, uh, I don't think Nancy's here right now, but she was here earlier, and I, I am so proud to serve with leader, soon to be speaker again, Nancy Pelosi, who's going to lead us to victory, to victory in November. She is working day and night, day and night, to make sure that we elect Democrats to the House of Representatives so that we can forge ahead with our agenda of change, which reflects California's values as Democrats. So tell Nancy Pelosi, give her some love, make sure we support her efforts as she continues to fight for us in D.C. and in these elections to take back the House. Let me take a minute to thank all of my fellow members of Congress, all of our elected officials from all across the state, and our party members and supporters, and to all of the speakers who we have heard from already. You all, you know, our grassroots Democrats in California, you're truly putting California values into action and making our great state really a model for the rest of the nation on so many issues. Actually, if you heard Keith at lunch, he talked about how far ahead we are on each and every issue here in California. So goes California, though, so goes the rest of the country. So I have a lot of hope for our country. And you know, you're the heart and soul of the Democratic Party the heart and soul. And also, I have to take a moment and just say to my dedicated, progressive Alameda County constituents, where are you? You guys continue to lead. It's so good to see you. Your vision and your activism and your intellect really drives our party in so many ways. So thank you for your support. Now this year, this year we celebrate the 50th anniversary of the Civil Rights Act and the War on Poverty. Let, which has worked, mind you, even though Paul Ryan may say it didn't work, believe you me, it has worked. We've come a long way, have a long way to go, but the war on poverty has worked. And I tell you, this was led, this was led by a great president, President Lyndon Baines Johnson, from my home state of Texas, my home state of Texas. 
And tonight, it is my honor and my pleasure to introduce really the manifestation of the dreams of Lyndon Baines Johnson, who is a, Mayor Castro, he is an amazing man who embodies our democratic values, but he also reflects all of the vision and dreams and the hard work of what 50 years with all of, many of you who are of that age, all of your activism has produced. Mayor Castro is inspiring Democrats and people all over this nation by putting our values, your values, to work each and every day as mayor of San Antonio, Texas. Now, Mayor Julian Castro has brought real and good pain, mind you, good pain, 21st century jobs to San Antonio. He has revitalized the city's urban core, and he initiated a decade of downtown, a decade, mind you, of downtown to encourage inner city investment. Now, California and Texas, we share a lot, but we share the border with Mexico, and we are a unified economic region which shares commerce, we share ideas, we share education, and we share people, and he gets that. Mayor Castro has brought many education initiatives, including bringing quality, full-day pre-kindergarten, pre, mind you, pre-kindergarten to over 22,000, 22,000 four-year-olds. Can you imagine 22,000 four-year-olds? 22,000. Also, because of his leadership, he opened what he calls the Cafe College, which is a one-stop center offering quality guidance on college admissions. Now in San Antonio, young people who otherwise would not have access nor an opportunity to go to college, they now have that because of Mayor Castro. Because of Mayor Castro. Now, Mayor Castro was the youngest elected city councilman in San Antonio's history at age 26. 26. Now he is, what, 38 years old? And so he's the youngest mayor of a top 50 American city. He is a shining example of a new generation of leaders, a new generation who was named at the World Economic Forum list of global leaders. He serves on the board of the National League of Cities and a host of other leadership roles. He also earned, he knows California very well. He earned his undergraduate degree at Stanford, at Stanford, and his law degree from Harvard, from Harvard. Now, I have to tell you, Mayor Castro is married to a beautiful woman. His wife, Erica, is an elementary school teacher, and he's the, okay, we got some teachers in the house. We got some teachers. And he is the proud father of Karina, who I think turns five years old very soon. So he's a family man. I serve with his twin brother, Joaquin Castro, in Congress, who has hit the ground running and making his mark in a very powerful way already. Now finally, let me just remind you of the Democratic Convention very recently that was held. You may remember Mayor Castro's speech. He gave the keynote speech. It was an amazing speech. It was an amazing speech. You remember that. He told his family story about his mother and her challenges. And I'm dying to meet his mother because her challenges really demonstrate the si se puede attitude and spirit. And he talked about that at the convention. And let me remind you, and I just have to sh say this, Mayor Castro, you know, I was in Boston, and our first African-American president, the great Barack Obama, he gave the keynote speech at the Democratic Convention in 2004. And I knew then, like I know now, that with Mayor Castro's brilliance and his leadership and his spirit, that he too, is the manifestation of Dr. King's dream 
but he's also destined to do great things, great things on the national stage. And so with that, let's give Mayor Julian Castro a resounding California Democratic Party welcome. Thank you for being with us tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Good evening. First of all, uh, let me say a huge thank you to you, Congressman Lee, Congresswoman Lee, for your fantastic leadership, not just of the Democratic Party here in California, but as a role model to so many folks and carrying the progressive cause throughout the United States of America. Thank you so much for your leadership. Well, I also, uh, Congresswoman, want to give you uh, greetings from my brother, Joaquin, your colleague. As you probably know, my brother uh, habitually goes around telling people that the way to tell us apart is that I am a, mi a minute uglier than he is. <laughs> the real difference is that I'm a minute older. And uh, this evening, He's in Washington, D.C. at the gridiron over there listening to Ted Cruz. So I'm a minute happier tonight also. <laughs> of course, our great congresswoman hails from Alameda County, from Oakland. I know we have some folks from Oakland here. I bet we also have some folks from San Diego. How about anybody from the Central Valley? How about San Francisco? All right, how about uh, LA? All right. Chairman Burton, congratulations to you on your stellar leadership of the party. It is so nice to be with a Democratic Party that is well organized, that has been successful. You took this party and brought it out of debt and into success swept the California state races and have set yourself up very well and the party for 2014 when I know that y'all will sweep again. Thank you for all your leadership. Well, we gather at a time when the world is changing faster than it ever has in human history. It's a time of great technological progress and also of geopolitical upheaval. It's a time that demands vision and leadership. It's a time when the nerds at Stanford regularly crush the cow bears in the big game. What in the world is going on? <laughs> in all seriousness, though, it is a time when more than ever, the values that have made America great of freedom, democracy, and opportunity are needed more than ever in our nation and throughout the world. My brother Joaquin and I are convinced that the United States has distinguished itself over the generations because it has always stood for liberty. The events of these past two weeks in the Ukraine remind us that that is not the case all over the world. 